Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for joining us for our new Edward J. Lewis Lawyers in the Classroom program series. For those of you who aren't aware, the Chicago Bar Association's Edward J. Lewis Lawyers in the Classroom program has existed for over 30 years. The program involves me, Tiffany Watson, director and former teacher and administrator, placing attorneys in second to eighth grade classrooms, um, social sciences, literature, and social studies classrooms to teach students about the US Constitution, um, their constitutional rights, um, and their rights and responsibilities under the law. The Lawyers in the Classroom program was originally part of Constitutional Rights Foundation Chicago, now under the auspices of the Chicago Bar Association's 501c3 since 2019. The program has continued to flourish. Attorney volunteers are partnered with teachers to provide students and with grade level lessons and knowledge based on real life experience. Um, they're also there to help them develop critical thinking and offer young people an opportunity to interact with a variety of positive adult role models. Um, so the purpose of this series is to learn more about our attorney volunteers and our teacher partners, um, while also learning about what they've experienced during our lawyer in the classroom visits. Today, we have one of our longtime attorney volunteers, Daniel Cotter. He is, Daniel is an, an attorney and counselor at Howard and Howard Attorneys, PLLC. Um, he is the former president of the Chicago Bar, Bar Association, and he's been identified as an Illinois super lawyer, 2017-2020. Um, thank you, Daniel. Welcome uh, for well, joining. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for joining us. Yes. Um, so I'm so glad that you're here. I was just so happy that you're a part of the series. We couldn't do it without you, of course. And we're just so grateful that you could join us uh, today. Likewise. So to get started, um, tell me, why did you decide to join uh, and be a part of Lawyers in the Classroom program? Back in 2003, uh, and then Mayor Richard Daly did a Principal for a Day program. Uh, the Chicago Bar Association decided to participate. One of the activities we decided to do was the Lawyer in the Classroom project that was at CRNC, like you said. And so I started doing it in 2003 as a young lawyer. And I went up there and just the experience of interacting with students uh, from uh, the, the Chicago uh, community and the questions they asked and just the brightness in the classroom of, of seeing a lawyer. And uh, I, I love mentoring and, and I have at the time, I had two young boys at home as well, and so I loved kind of that interaction. And as a as a young attorney, uh, nobody in my family had been an attorney, and so it's just to me it's kind of a nice opportunity uh, to interact with students and expose them to uh, the potential of what law could be. Excellent, thank you for that. Um, and so. You've been on, you've been a part of this program for so many years, um, thankfully, and you continue to be a part of the program, even though it's transitioned to remote um, over the last uh, year. Um, so what do you see as being a benefit uh, to your, to the classroom for these students? Like what's beneficial about this program that you see? I, th I think, you know, as you noted, it's, it's a chance for them to engage in critical thinking and to think about things. A lot of the uh, problems and projects that we do is like no weapons in the school and makes them or no electronic devices and it makes them really think and, and, and it's always interesting because every time I do the same problem I think that, that the uh, survey of the, of the 30 students or however many in the classroom should be around the same it's always different there's always a new wrinkle and, and they always raise something in the problem like what what about this and then, you know, it, it sometimes meanders. And I, I think it's just a good opportunity uh, for students to, uh, you know, learn in a different method than, uh, as you mentioned, you're a former teacher, than they might do on a, on a daily basis. And I think for, for students, especially in the pandemic time, but even in, in the other uh, pre-pandemic world, it gave them an opportunity to do something different and have fun, but also learn and, and kind of advance their thinking abilities. Absolutely. 
So as again, we talked about you, you've actually been in the classroom and I've been there. I've seen you do a great job with the students teaching them and actually talking about your background too. I've seen you do that. That's uh, really phenomenal. I've seen that. Um, and you've been in the classroom and remote. So that's important to point out. So you've really stuck with this program. Um, what has been some of your favorite experiences? Um, any highlights that you've had while you've you've been a part of this program? Sure, one, one that comes to mind is a, a few years ago, and I think it was at uh, Twain School, but it may have been a, another school. And we were doing the uh, Bad Wolf Project. It's a video and there's a trial and it's the three little pigs and you know the the wolf goes on trial. And I remember one of the students at my table, he, uh, we were showing him the evidence and the exhibits and and, uh, it was the funniest experience because he was adamant and he had well based positions of why he was he was going to be that juror that that resulted in a hung jury that, that the wolf was not the bad guy he was like what about this that's a defective property and like all this wow. stuff and so I, I'll never forget that and, and his face just he and, and trying to you know not be intimidated I'm a big guy so so sitting at those little chairs trying not to like stare at him or like you know do anything that would cause him to feel like he was, you know, wrong, and uh, sure. and he was he was just a, a great advocate. So that was one favorite memory. And, and this past fall, you know, we, we did a remote, and uh, one of the students, I was told by the teacher that the, the class might not be as interactive, or or they might be more shy. But one student in particular, you know, he he was very uh, uh, engaging, and, and in the chat room, he'd always ask, "How are you, Mr. Cotter?" and and, and you know, I just had it for breakfast, and and it was very cool. And uh, you know, I, th I think the teacher appreciated it, but I, I enjoyed that as well because it's a young man who, you know, is is that's how it should be, right? People should be intimidated to uh, uh, to to engage, and and it was great. So when I came back the second time, he's like, I know where you're going with this, and then the third time, you know, it was a, it was a nice dialogue we had. Oh, awesome! So you built a relationship, which is so important. That's awesome. And yeah, it, was so his birthday, it was his birthday on one of those occasions. He was all excited. So, <laughs> yeah. So we had a little celebration of his birthday while we were doing the problem. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Yeah, that's exactly what we love. We love hearing about the students critically thinking. It sounds like you had those experiences and then you've built relationships with the students. And so that's just so significant to actually transferring the knowledge. So um, we really appreciate you being a part of the program, Daniel. And, and of course, I appreciate you taking the time to share this with us. So thank you. And uh, we will see you next time. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thank you very much, Tiffany. Bye-bye.